Thank God for all of you that are coming to worship with us on this blessed Sunday morning. Thank God for all of those who continue to worship with us through our live stream. God is good. Amen. Amen. Need you to pray with me this morning as we continue our journey from Wednesday, noonday, and evening to Sunday morning in the book of James. James challenges us to think out of the box, to move from our natural physical frame of reference to spirituality. He challenges us to take a different perspective. So I'm going to need your help this morning along this journey. Amen? Because James gets kind of cerebral. He's, he gets a little deeper, takes us out of our comfort zone that we may grow in Jesus Christ. Amen? Be so kind as we ought to meet me in James chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. James chapter 1, beginning in verse 1, you'll find these words recorded. As we pray, the word has appeared. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. You can read with us the beginning of verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that she may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and toss. But let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. In all his... Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy and precious word. Eternal God, our Father, we come to say thank you for your goodness and your mercy. God, I come humbly realizing fully that the assignment that you've given me, I cannot carry out without your power and your strength. So breathe through me, God that your word might live and that it might transform our lives, that we may become mature saints lacking nothing. We give your name all the honor and the glory because truly it all belongs to you. It's in that also mighty, powerful, resurrected name of Jesus that we pray and all of God's servants said, amen, amen and bless the Lord. Warren Worsby writes profound commentaries on the New Testament books in what he calls his B-series. In the book of James, he's summarizing two words. He said, be mature. In other words, he emphasizes spiritual maturity. So for a title, if you help me out this blessed Sunday morning, it's time to grow up. If you were sitting on your row and a grown man came in with two beautiful babies and two bottles. And you were thinking that the normal mature man would allow the babies to have the bottles that they might be nourished. But throughout the whole service on your row beside you, he was sucking on the bottles and the babies were crying. You would look with concern, if not dismay and disgust. And you might be saying to yourself, if you're bold enough, you would say to him, you need to grow up. Some youth and young adults have all the answers to the church and life while living in their mama's basement. But it's time, Fort Foot, for us to grow up in Jesus Christ. James was writing to the people here. They had problems in their personal spiritual lives. There was a problem in the church fellowship. They were experiencing severe testings. Some were catering to the wealthy. Others were being robbed by the wealthy. They were competing for church positions. And James said, while he goes on to list a long miscellaneous list of church concerns, he said there's one commonality or universal 
principle here, it's because of spiritual immaturity. James said it, not Lyle's. And so all of us need to grow up in Jesus Christ. Amen. Spiritual maturity and growth is not a destination. It is a journey. I don't know about you, but I need Jesus to walk with me. It's time to grow up. James, I like the way James starts. He says, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. James probably here was a brother of Jesus. Now, you know how we are. If we are related to somebody important and famous, in a few minutes, some way or somehow, we're probably going to allow you to know that. If Barack was my brother, it probably wouldn't take me long to tell you that I'm the brother of the president. When our person becomes a county exec, I might even tell you that I'm their pastor if they win. Y'all know how we are. We like a name drop. James didn't say I'm the brother of Jesus, but he said something that will bless all of our hearts once we grasp the principle here. See, we know what it said, but to know is one thing, but to live out that which you know is another. James simply said, I'm a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've said it before almost ad infinitum. Some of you are probably tired of hearing it, but you're going to hear it one more time. Once we realize that no matter what our title position is or is not, the blessed hallelujah part is that we are blessed and pretty to be servants of the most high God. And when a servant goes to the door, he or she does not have the authority to decide who's allowed to enter because it's not our house, it's the Lord's house because I'm merely a servant. Moses, that great leader who led them by pillow fire by night, pillow cloud by day, when it came to Moses' eulogy, they didn't talk about how great of a leader Moses was, though he was. But he said, Moses, my servant. Are you praying with me? If we realize that and begin to focus on that, 99% of our church problems just got resolved. Because servants try to work together for the glory of God. Philippians 2, 3 says, Philippians 2, 3 said, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but let it all be done to the glory of God. He says, I'm writing to the 12 tribes which are scattered. By the fact that the Jewish people have been scattered is indicative of the spiritual decline in their nation as much as ours. My wife is a beautiful, intelligent woman, and she came up with a great idea one day that we should have a garden. I said, honey, we have a garden. She said, where is it? She said, we could take this backyard and cultivate it, and it would grow wonderful. I said, honey, we have a garden. We got two, if not three. One is called Giant. The other is called Safeway and Food Lines Around the Corner. She said, no, I'm talking about planting something. I'm saying a point here. They scattered. It's not a reckless, unthought for scattering, but in the Greek, it means a divine sowing. Help me out this morning. I told you I'm going to need your help because James kind of deep. I need y'all to take a moment and just shout out where you are originally from. Deacon Leroy is from Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Deacon Toby's from Montrose, down lower country. Brother... Haynes is from somebody over on the left side. Where y'all from? D.C. Anybody outside of D.C.? Brooklyn, New York. Detroit. So God has scattered us and planted us divinely here that we might grow up in Jesus Christ. When my daddy started sowing seeds, we expected something to come up after the seed has been watered. Acts chapter 8, they were scattered because of persecution. Acts chapter 11, those seeds became very fruitful. What Satan meant for evil, thinking he was scattering the people to destroy them, God was divinely sowing them so that wherever they landed in Maryland, the seed of God, the word of God would grow up. Somebody would come to know about Jesus Christ. Scattered abroad. He says, my brethren, James uses this phrase about 19 times, talking about brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says 
in chapter 1. We have to be patient in testing as a sign of our spiritual maturity. Can I give you a quick summary since y'all didn't make it on Wednesday night? James chapter 1 says, if you want to grow spiritually and mature, number one chapter is that we must be patient in testing. Chapter 2, he says, not only must we be patient in testing, not just good enough to know the truth. Chapter 2 says, we now must practice the truth. Chapter 3 is a big one. Everybody got to come that day, that Sunday, and that Wednesday on chapter 3 because he said, not only must we be patient in testing, practice the truth, we need to have power over this tongue. Everybody say, power over my tongue. Help me, Holy Ghost. Chapter 4, he says, you got to be a peacemaker and not a troublemaker. Chapter 5, he says, you got to pray when you're in trouble. Don't panic, pray. That's a summary of chapter 5. We're going to be in James for a little while, in case y'all want to read ahead. We're going to be here for a minute. Patient in testing. We like to quote the scriptures, and it's good to do that. Blessings pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Bless coming in, bless going out. Child, I'm so blessed if it gets any better, I don't know what I'm going to do. But there are some other promises on the other side. John 16, 33. He said, I tell you these things that you might have peace, but he, here's the promise. In this world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I've already overcome the world. point I'm trying to make here quickly is that God uses tribulations to develop spiritual maturity. You and I wish God had another methodology of getting there. I want to be mature, but I sure don't want to go through tribulation. Tribulation is a Latin word from tribulum. It gives the picture of a long wooden beam with metal teeth on it like a rake. It separates the wheat from the tariff, the bad stuff. Tribulation feels like I'm being crucified, but I'm really being purified. It feels like I'm about to be destroyed, but I'm about to be developed and disciple. Tribulation feels like a valley, but it moves me to victory. It feels like trials and tragedy, but it really moves me to triumph. And so, I got four things to tell you. Then I'll be on out your way. In about 14 African-American preaching minutes. I borrowed that from my friend from Mississippi. He said, first of all, you got to count. I got to count. It's right here. Count it all joy when you fall in diverse temptations. Reverend Klein set me out with the Greek here. New American Standard says, you don't just fall, you encounter Various and diverse trials and tribulations. How many have encountered in the trial since January 1? Think it not strange as a part of life. But he said, you got to learn how to count. Wait a minute, James. I, I, I wrestle with James. You want me to count it all joy when there's heartaches, when there's trials, when there's tribulation, when there's pain? Where there's discomfort and inconvenience, when there's loss and lack, you want me to count it all joy? Yes, I do. In the natural, that makes no sense. That's illogical. That's irrational. It's unthinkable. It's not doable in the natural, but in the spirit realm. Come on, help me out, Brother Luke. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Acts 14, 22 says it this way. Confirming the souls of the disciples... And exhorting or encouraging them to continue in the faith. Watch this, that we must do much tribulation enter to the kingdom of God. Wait a minute, I thought when I got saved, life was going to be peachy, keemy, honky-dory, tiptoeing through the tools around the trials and storms of life. No! We must, help me Holy Spirit, through much tribulation enter to the kingdom of God. Anybody like going through tunnels? Well, going through that tunnel up near Baltimore, 95, or the Harbor Tunnel. 
You cannot back up without causing a major calamity. Whether you like it or not, knowing that water's over the top and the water over the top comes in the tunnel, you're probably on your way to glory. But you and I must go through. Trouble and tribulation is not an elective in the school of life. It's a requirement for graduation and matriculation. Come on, help me, church. I got to count it all joy. I talked to Peter. Y'all remember Peter? That impetuous disciple cutting off folk ears with a switchblade. He said, Peter 1, 6 says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold tests and temptation. Peter says, going down to chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, I like that term. It helps me out know that God still cares for me even when I'm going through. Can I get a witness? When the last time you called him or her beloved? He said, think it not strange when you go through not just trials but fiery trials, which is to come to try you. Think it not strange. We blame some stuff. The devil is on my case. It may not be the devil. It may be God allowing you and me to go through tribulation on our way to become mature. It's almost graduation time. Prayers of many parents, grandparents, and supporters about to be answered. The young man came boldly across the stage and the the presiding officer said, please hold your applause. Tell all the students have matriculated, but you remember all that it took to get your child across the stage. How you had to pray and pray and pray and pay and trust the Lord for all that was going to come about. And your child came. You broke out of the blow. Hallelujah. Bless his name. This young man had received his PhD. He was so proud. Granddad said, son, I'm real proud of you. You got your PhD. Now life will teach you the other 23 letters of life. Even the hymnologist got it right, Ms. Hearn, said it takes time to be holy. You're not going to go to bed a blunder and wake up a wonder overnight. There are really no overnight sensations because the elevators, truth be told, to success have always been broken. You got to take some steps. They may lie and tell you, I got started last week and I'm a millionaire now. Matter of fact, most millionaires that went bankrupt and failed in business, that's how they do so well now. Count it all joy. God, I need you to help me because it's not making sense. You want me to count this hurt? You want me to count this pain? Yes. That's what spiritual maturity looks like. Life does not always come in nice USDA packages. Sometimes it comes ugly. One man and his wife took a tour through a world-renowned rug factory, Persian rugs, like the ones some of y'all have in your house. He was looking at this weaver, this, this disconnected, disjointed pattern, strands of yarn all on the back. And the, the tour guy said, don't make the mistake of judging the work of the worker by the side that you're looking at. You're looking at the wrong side. Turn it over. Some of y'all do cross stitching and picking and the back side of the thing looked ragged than a bowl of sauerkraut. Makes no sense. Sometimes Jesus is saying to you and me, we got to look at troubles from the right side to know and trust God is working out for our good. It may look raggedly, disjointed, disconnected, all out of source on the back side, but when you flip the rug over, oh, it's a nice, beautiful pattern. Come on, help me out, Paul. I got some help here. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 through 5, it says, And not only so, but we don't just tolerate tribulation. We now glory in our tribulation in the spirit realm. Why? Because knowing this, that tribulation worketh patiently by say patience. Patience experience and experience hope and hope make it not a shame. Why? Because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts. By the Holy Spirit, which is given to you and me. For when we are without strength. Christ died for the ungodly. God is saying, I'm taking all of your trials, all of your tribulations, all your heartache and pain to help you mature. 
Count it all joy. I don't like the taste of trouble. I don't like the taste of pain. I don't like the taste, taste of disappointment. But as I look back over my life, and you look back over your life, your best lesson did not come from times of ease and prosperity, but it was the hard times. It was adversity. It was my hurt and pain that gave me the capacity to walk and help other folk in their hurt and their pain because I... So I got to count. I got to be honest. Don't be hypocritical. Said, you know, I'm just... Ha- no, you're not. Don't, don't act like it don't hurt because hurt stuff hurt and pain is pain. Keep it real. Some church folk get so super sanctified, they're going to spiritualize and lie about stuff. No, I don't feel good. If you like pain, you better call 911 your primary care or dial a prayer. You need some help. But I realize somebody said we live life going forward. Understand a little bit more of it looking backwards. It's the heartache and even my failures that help me to become who God is trying to make us to be. So I got to count it all joy when I encounter Diverse temptations. One good verse to learn of many is 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Said there has no temptation taken you and me, but as such is common to everybody else, but God is faithful and just, will not suffer us to be tempted above that which we are able to bear, but will with the temptation make a way to escape. Has anybody been tempted since January 1 of 2018? You can fast three times a day, pray till you fall out. In this flesh, time to time, every last one of us will be tempted by one thing or another. But, him knowledge just helps out for it, said, it's no sin to be tempted. The sin is yielding to the temptation. Help me, God, to count it all joy. Because I don't understand what you're doing. But one thing I know, I know you're working for my good. Won't he do it? I know that all things work together for good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. God, we do love you and we are called according to your purpose. So I cannot track the hand of God, but I can always trust the heart of God. God, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know how. I don't know when or where, but I know. Bible goes on to say, these slight afflictions, light afflictions, says 2 Corinthians 4, 17, which is but for a moment. But wait a minute, God. This moment has been going on for six months. This moment has been going on for six years. Talking about, tell me to learn Psalm 30, verse 5. I did it, but I'm still hurting. Tell, talking about weeping men do it for the night. It's been a whole lot of nights <laughs> and a whole lot of tears. And a whole lot of hurt. I've been lied on. Scandalized my name. Assassination of my character. God, when is joy going to come? Look like hope is going on vacation. Joy has taken a sabbatical. I can't find joy nowhere. If I keep looking down here at earthly circumstances, you can become despondent, disillusioned, and depressed. Oh, but up above my head, I hear music in the air. I know there must be a God somewhere. I'm going to hold on till my change come. So with the help of God, I'm going to all joy. I may be down, but I'm not out. Just because I'm covered with dirt, I'm not getting, we're not getting buried. We are being planted. They look the same to the natural eye. Oh, but since we've been planted, he's going to water us with the word of God. We're going to water our situation with our prayers. And after a while, we're going to spring up. The Bible says, our trials are more precious than gold with perisheth. Even gold cannot get to the refiner until it's been processed. I talked to the goldsmith. I said, Mr. Goldsmith, how long do you leave the gold in the fire? He said, well, you know all of us here today are made in God's image. God's not trying to burn us up. He's trying to burn off the dirt, dust, and dross. How long till he sees his image? When I'm going through 
in the pain, I'm being purified. Bible even said there are fiery trials. <laughs> Help me, Holy Spirit. Fire is a purifier. Feel like I'm burning up. I can't take it. I had up to here, but I'm really being purified. And when we come forth, I'm going to come forth like pure gold. Then I really have a testimony when the test of life is so strong that it calls you moan. Has anybody been there lately? Cried, grinded tears. Heart broken in many pieces. But then in the midst of my despair, God showed up. He made a way, gave me power beyond my strength, gave me joy in the midst of my pain, gave me a hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Now that I know that I know that I know it's going to be all right, I got a joy that the world can't take. I got a power. I got a peace that passes all understanding. I'm about to grow up in Jesus Christ. Devil thought I was going to blow up, but I'm about to grow up. It's time to grow up. Count it all joy. Stop your moaning. Immature folk pout a lot. Mature folk praise a lot. Immature folk cry a lot. Mature folk, compassion a lot. I'm going through the valley. I discovered, decided, and come to learn that in order for there to be one valley, there got to be surrounded by two mountains. Well, well. So you can focus on the valley or the mountains all around me. Help me, Holy Spirit. I got to count. I got to move. Y'all holding me up. I got four things. I'm on number two. Somebody say Count. Count it all joy. God, I don't like it, but if it makes me better, do what you have to do. Because I realize you got to do something in me and to me so you can work through me. Look at the folk that God used. He took them through something. Count it all joy. When, not if, when. Trouble's going to come. It's a part of life. You won't get out of this world. You can have a trillion dollars, but you might have some trillion dollar problems. Money is all right. I got no problem with that as much as money can do. Money can buy you a $20,000 bed, but you still might have insomnia. Money can buy you filet mignon, caviar, blue Merlin crabs. But you might not have an appetite. Money can buy you a $400,000 Rolls Royce or a Maserati. But you may not feel like driving. <laughs> Money can buy you $1,500 Louis Ferragamo alligator crocodile shoes. But your feet might still be hurting. <laughs> count it all joy. I got to go. Number two. Not only must I count. I got to know. Says verse 3. Know what? Know this. Know this what? That the trying of our faith worketh patience. We got to know that the trying. Peek at the Greek and this word trying translates to the word evaluate. Paul says, now that I'm saved. I got a different set of values that help me to evaluate. And I don't think so or hope so or maybe. I know that the trying of my faith worketh or develop patience. Patience is not a passive acceptance of circumstances, but a courageous perseverance in the face of suffering and difficulty. I repeat, patience is not just a giving up whatever passive acceptance of my circumstances but it is a courageous perseverance in the face of suffering and difficulty I'm going to stand on the word of God no matter what I'm going to stand on the word of God no matter who prays me I'm going to stand on the word of God no matter what does or does not happen what I do or do not have I learn in whatsoever state I'm in therewith to be content trusting in the Lord knowing that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can act or think 
One of the hardest things for us to do is to wait. We don't like to wait. We get frustrated. We get upset. We become edgy and irritable because somebody asked us. Somebody left home late this morning and got mad because the person in front of you was driving the speed limit. Don't they know you late? Hebrews 6.12, Hebrews 6.12, that ye be not slothful, but following of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Who wants to inherit the promises? There's a requirement. Got to be patient. Not patient first or patient care. Every time you got a little ache, you run up and ain't nothing wrong with you. Go on and pray sit down. But following of them who, through faith and patience, inherit the promises. Job 23.10, he says, but God knoweth the way that it takes. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as go. If you haven't been tried and tested, you're not ready to lead. Patience is a virtue. Knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience that leads to spiritual maturity. Mature saints spend time in prayer and in the word of God. Since one of our emphasis for this month is let's go to Sunday school month, Mature saints have a hunger for the word of God. Immature folks say, just a little snack and a moaning tone, I'll be all right. Mature folks said, Psalm 63, God, early will I seek you. I live in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. God, I want to be in your presence. I want you to walk with me and talk with me. I have a hunger and a thirst for God. Matthew 5 said, they that are hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Some things we got to know. Secondly, we need to know that these trials and tribulation feel like they're working against us, but they're really working for us. Knowing this, the trying of your faith, work with patience. Some young folk just graduated last week or next week. They want the same compensation you make. You've only been on the job for 25 years. They want their first house to be the same one they grew up in. Unless you help them out or if you've been really blessed, it's probably not going to flow quite that way. Some of you are very kind and been loving and you're going to make the $20,000 deposit for them. Let them get a house like you. Bless the name of Jesus. Some wise parents know that it's better to let them mature so they can appreciate Yeah, because if it comes too fast, they call it sweat equity. <laughs> they don't care if the lights stay on all night. You playing Pepco and Smeco, they, they, they're good. They don't care if they drop their phone in water. They didn't pay you for it. It's all, it's all. My dad is loving. He'll give me another one. When I was up in New Jersey some years ago looking at a previously owned Mercedes, and the lady was a, a judge appointed by Jimmy Carter, one of us. She said, young man, let me explain to you how this car works. You probably don't know. I said, yes, ma'am, just please explain it to me. She was telling me how the doors and all the instrumentation of the panel. She said, my grandson wanted this car. He said, he just turned 16. He said, if he start with a Mercedes, what are you going to do for an Encore? <laughs> she said, I'm going to get him a Honda or a Toyota or a Hyundai. Let him ride happy in Jesus. Count it all joy. You and I have to know by the spirit of the living God that the trying of our faith is really working for us. Anybody ever went kind of kicking and screaming on the way to do something different? And after you got involved, you found you really enjoyed it and it was a blessing from the Lord.
It's time to grow up. He wants us to be patient in testing. Some writers propose the point that patience is the door to all the other blessings of God. You've seen young folk who go from zero to hero. They go from obscurity and anonymity to stardom overnight and lavishly destroy themselves by the time they're 22. It's a process. Now that we know, I'm still going to pray and ask God for the breakthrough. We are not going to break down. We're about to get a breakthrough. There's a song out. He's working for my good. Y'all heard the song. It, it. Part of maturing is in prayer and in God's word. You don't have to be in Sunday school to study God's word, do you? But it sure would help. I stole that in on you. Count it all joy. Know that the trying of your faith work is patience. Number three, let, let, if I say let, that simply means surrender our stubborn wills. Some of us are strong willed. That's how God has used that quality in the positive side to push us forward to promotions and blessings. But when it comes to Jesus, Luke 22, by verse 44, you know the story in Gethsemane. He said, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not my will. One of the challenges of pastoring and shepherding a gifted congregation, I find that we got some strong wills. Pastor, why are you roaring when you get to the point? Because that's how we are. <laughs> some of you are quiet till certain buttons, buttons are sufficiently pushed. My the little boy, dad said, son, please have a seat. Son, please have a seat. Son, please sit down. He said, yes, daddy, I'm sitting down, but I'm standing up in my heart. Anybody raising the strong-willed children? Grandchildren. Don't get mad at them. Those traits may have come from... They got that part of that DNA. <laughs> Let means to surrender our wills, pastor included. Things can't always go my way at fourth foot just because I'm the pastor. Say, guess what? It can't always go your way just because you're a member. Not our will, but thy will be done. Jesus said, I did not come down from heaven to do my will, but to do the will of my father if I want to. Be mature and learn to be patient in my testing. I've got to be able to count it all joy when I fall and encounter diverse temptations. i got to know that the trying of my faith is working for my good. Now i got to surrender all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Have your way. Let patience have her perfect or mature work. That we may be, we're never going to be perfect, so the word perfect can't mean perfect, but it really means mature. Wanting nothing. One thing I have come to learn is that as I mature, I want less. Who wants stuff? Who likes stuff? I like stuff. Y'all looking so spiritual like you don't want something. I saw the want list on your iPad. It reached from here to Bronx, New York and tide water all the way to Ghana <laughs> I don't want nothing with a payment <laughs> folk calling you extending credit now that the bills get paid on time no thanks some of us use our credit card as if the pay statement ain't never coming let patience have her perfect work It's time to grow up. Aren't you getting hungry for the word of God? Don't you want to get to a new place? Second Peter 3, 9 gives us a powerful verse. Second Peter 3, 9, as I move quickly along. Second Peter 3, 9 said this. God is not slack concerning his promises, 
as we humans count slackness, but watch this, is long suffering to us would, not whether that anyone would perish, but that all should come to repentance. God has been so and is so patient with you and me. And now that we're developing the spiritual maturity to be patient and wait on the Lord, it ought to give us more patience with other imperfect folk like us. Let patience have a perfect work. Some of us have areas that we don't want anybody giving us advice about nothing. Can I blame it on the men since we strongly take it? Sometimes our wives who love us, who are our helpmates, soulmates, have insight and intuition, but we don't want to hear that. They trying to help us, but I ain't trying to hear that. So we say, now's not the time. Under that voice, they're saying, it ain't never the time. Oh, come on, help me, somebody. 35 years of marriage, I'm speaking not theoretically and theologically, but experientially. <laughs> Actually, she'll tell you, he hard-headed. Sometime. Then she changed the tone and said, Joe, hey. Honey, can we talk? Yes, we can. Since you're going to put it like that. They know how to get to us. Where's KC? <laughs> Strong young deacon chairman, youngest deacon chairman in the history of the Fourth Foot Baptist Church. KC said, hey, Rich. <laughs> Got to do Jerusalem ministry today. How about KC? He said, okay. You know, Got to call my lieutenants. Y'all got to handle this because I need. Deacon Leroy been married to Mr. Les for a good time now. A role model of what a real marriage look like. Deacon Leroy is a strong military. 82nd Air Command jumping out of perfectly good airplanes, parachuting. <laughs> been to Iraq and Iran, been in wartime. Mr. Les say, Leroy. <laughs> now Leroy. He was six feet five a minute ago. Now he's about five feet ten. That's a good thing. My buddy Otis France, Tiger Woods Sr., Jr. is strong, but Miss Joyce knows how to dial his number. I'm saying that to say that sometimes we don't even want God telling us what to do. Surrender. We're going to get along better in our ministries after the sermon because we're going to be surrendering. Just because you got a right. Sometimes spiritual maturity, love God and the people of God, we'll give up our right to help somebody else. I ain't always got to be in charge. That'll wear you out. Even batteries need recharging. <laughs> Help us, God, to surrender our will so we can please you and not trying to please people and even ourselves. We're almost home. It's time to grow up. Count it all joy. Know that the trying of our faith is working for our good to bring about spiritual maturity. Surrender. When I say surrender and submission, I hear the hair on somebody's back of the neck standing up. I don't like that word. Surrender seems to be a sign of weakness. No, not really. If you're strong, you can surrender. Some of our attitudes, we need to surrender. And please watch that tone of voice. That tone is... This, ooh. Brother man, the only tone you can talk in is bass and baritone. That troubles her. My sister, all you know is soprano and alto. Gonna tell us what we ought to be doing. We're going to tell you what we are not going to do. Based on that tone. It's not always what you say. Yeah, you win. That's why you have Popeye's having fried chicken by yourself. You won. <laughs> Keep on winning. 
That's why you're home alone. Don't want to be. Yeah, you won. When new members join your ministry, can you help orientate them to the ministry so they can help with the work of the ministry? It should not be this hard to do ministry for Jesus. Pride, arrogance, get all up in the way. I'm not speaking from just theoretically. I'm talking about real life at the fort. We got to grow up. Siblings fight among each other, call it sibling rivalry. While the world is dying, we're fighting up in here. We should be flowing in fellowship, not fighting. <sighs> Help me, Holy Spirit, not to grow weary in well doing. All of us need to be responsible. For the maturing of the saints. Yes, I got my primary responsibility. I must do all that I can. But I need you also to do all that you can. Help the new babies grow up. You should be on meat by now. Why you got three bottles? <laughs> Help and courage. We took a peek at our document. In love. In love. In love, 21 of them are at the interstate speed limit, 70. And I ain't that far from it myself. <laughs> and you are not either. Some of y'all are on past it. Zoom. So we need to be loving, nurturing. Don't, don't we? I'm not fussing. I'm just sharing. Our anointed women of God versus woman, dark deaconess. Ten of them are at the interstate speed limit. That's real good on one side because we got maturity. We got wisdom. We got life experience. But if wisdom and life experience headed to Fort Lincoln and resurrection in Arlington, all that wisdom should not go in the ground unless we have departed it. In some, so the fort is going strong after we have gone on. 20 years from now, I'll be an old happy man. If the Lord tarries, let us stay here. You be old long with me. Why are you looking at me funny? You ain't going to stay here. So I'm saying that we should be sharing the leadership gifts that God had. That's all I'm trying to say. Where's Reverend Jarvis? He's 20 years younger than me. Pastor Peter Pan, the Corona Baptist, 20 years younger than me. One day. Y'all won't have to hear my loud voice no more. I'll be somewhere listening for my name when the roll is called up yonder. Last point, then I'm done. Count it all joy. Know this. Let surrender our will and forth acts with a believing heart. If anyone lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and abrade it not, and he shall give it to him. I come to realize I cannot even think about doing what God has called me to do. I got to ask God for power, strength, and wisdom. So do you. Anybody here have enough wisdom already? If so, you can pick up your wings as a security desk and go on to heaven. You're done. <laughs> ask of God. Sometime, stop asking people for what only God can do. It's good to share something, something between you and Jesus. You got direct line. You ain't got to call a pastor. You ain't got to call a deacon or deaconess. You ain't got to call a trustee. You ain't got to call a board maker. You can call up heaven. Ask God. Have you asked God for something that God met your need? He promised to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He won't upbraid you or spank you for asking. He give it to all of us liberally and lavishly. I think Reverend Robert said he loathes us. He piles us up with good stuff like a good father. Any of y'all have a hard time saying no to your children? Come on, tell the truth. I got one. I got some of y'all shaking your head. I, well, all the men's hands saying yes. Are the sisters that strong? I got to confess. I, I'm weak. Jordan know how to get me. Hey, Uncle Joe. 
Hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, had a good day? <laughs> I know we're going somewhere. <laughs> he called me on the phone. He don't call to say, how you doing? I forget when payday is, but he know my payday is better than me. <laughs> my wife said, yeah, yeah, he telling the truth. Am I telling the truth? Thank you so much. I ain't lying in the pulpit. But if we know how to give good gifts, how much more? We are a very educated congregation. We have matriculated through seven different universities, got more degrees than a local thermometer. But knowledge is knowing what to do and a lot but wisdom is knowing how when and where who along me has done the right thing but the wrong time that thing came back like a boomerang at the same time when god told us to move but it wasn't comfortable so we waited and the season passed I'm going to count it all joy when I encounter trials and tribulation because I know that God is working on me and is working on you. I'm going to know that I know by the word of God that the trying of our faith worketh patience. Who has a short fuse? Blip. Who has a circuit breaker in the house? Last question for the day. Circuit breaker in the basement on the side. When the system gets overload, click, so the house doesn't catch on fire, it trips the circuit breaker to diffuse the power surge, and you have to go to the box and flip it back. Some of us need to exercise our spiritual circuit breaker and learn not to flip the switch so fast and override your system and catch something on fire. Let's surrender our wills. Help us right here, God. Please, 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 please help us. Then I can ask God to help me. Ask God to guide me. Ask God to give me wisdom to love his people. You ever try leading people? It's a wonder. All my hair ain't gone. It's thinning. Used to take 30 minutes coming down. About two minutes, I'm done. <laughs> Ever tried teaching people? Your church. Did anybody see Channel 7 this week? The Fort Foot Baptist Church was on Channel 7. Did y'all catch that? This little church on the side of the road. On Channel 7. If you come back next week, we'll show you the clip, the interview. But you got to come to church. We had it today, but we do want to hold it back. Because I know y'all coming. Because next Sunday is everybody show up on Mother's Day. Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. Let's stand. But for real. Our veterans ministry, Prince Rollins, started the suit drive for homeless veterans. He had an idea to get a couple hundred suits. It blew up to 500. 500 become 1,000. Master Chief Sergeant Reverend Val, Chief Master Sergeant, are we at 1,500 now? 1,500 suits for veterans. Can we say amen? The broadcaster put it on Channel 7. And then he said, they were such a loving people at that church. I want to come back. We got Channel 7 advertisement for free. <laughs> when you wait on the Lord and try to grow up, he'll let you blow up. That idea did not come from the pastor. One of the members said, I need to do this. I said, let's go with it. Lady called in on Thursday from Pennsylvania. Said, I saw a fourth foot on the church. When can I bring a lot of suits to the church from Pennsylvania? 
Who knows what God is about to do if we would just grow up in Jesus? It ain't about show. It's about service. Miss Maylena Seif is a church lady. Has been invited to share in a Broadway production. What are you saying? I'm saying God is trying to use us for his glory. If you're here today and don't know Jesus Christ. You're not able to count it all joy. Because it all doesn't feel good. Jesus can turn it around. Sometimes trouble and trials are merely blessings turned inside out. Do I have some witnesses in here? Sometimes what hurt the most initially, eventually was the thing that helped us the most. God wants to use you. He's not looking for super saints or celebrities. He's just looking for servants. If you give your life to Jesus Christ, there's no telling what he may do in your life. How many folk he may use you to bless? Somebody said, if you just bless and so love where you are. God is speaking to your heart today. Please be obedient. He has blessings for you with your name on it. Would there be any this morning? Maybe you're here today and you already know Jesus. You feel led to become a part of our growing family? We'd be honored, glad, and delighted to receive you at this time. Some of you have been waiting for a while. This may be your moment. If God is speaking, let's come and grow together. Last point, then I promise we're going to move to communion. I think those tall redwoods out in California, they don't grow alone. They grow in families. Somehow the roots from tree one go underground, connect to tree two. Tree two connects to tree three. Tree three connects to tree four. They stand storms, winds, wintry weather, whatever they cause, because they grow together. Maybe God is saying, You've been trying to grow and mature by yourself. We grow better together. Would there be any today? Second emphasis for this month is outreach, evangelism. We're asking every member to touch at least one person and invite them to come to Jesus and to come to worship at Fort Foot. Just one. You can happen and do more. That'll be wonderful. Because as we grow and mature, we're not just concerned about our own spiritual growth, but our family, relatives, friends, neighbors, co-workers, and associates. It goes beyond ourselves. 